What is one of the most dangerous phrases of our time that every single one of us has used? Google it. No, 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 really, that's the phrase. Google it. If you're old enough to remember life before Google, you can recall a time where free thinking allowed us to have different ideas and opinions that were not created for us like they are now. If you understand how Google works, you'll understand why this phrase is so dangerous. Most Americans utilize Google as their default search engine, and it's the world's most visited website and currently holds 92% of search engine market share. You probably also use Google Maps, Gmail, YouTube, Google Docs, Chrome, Google Home, Google News, and your kids probably don't even have textbooks anymore because they use Chromebooks, also a Google product. Did you know that Google also owns Android, Nest, Waze, and Fitbit, among many others? At what point is it too much? Are we allowing Google to control the narrative of what we perceive as reality? Google has full control of what articles or data first appears when you utilize their search feature. If Google doesn't want you to see something, that's their choice, but should it be? If you own a business and you want visibility to the world, you need to ensure that you use Google Business, your Google reviews are good, and you use the right Google recommended keywords. And if you really want to stand out, you have to pay Google to put you at the top of the search results. We learned in August of 2019 via a leak of 950 pages of documents from a senior Google engineer that Google had a blacklist of terms they used to censor conservative websites prior to the 2020 election. Why haven't you seen this leak? Because you can't Google it. Last week, a Fifth Circuit court upheld a law in Texas that prohibits big tech platforms from moderating content based on basis of viewpoint. The overall basis of big tech's argument is that HB 20 violates their First Amendment constitutional rights to decide what content they do and do not allow on their platforms based on what they see fit. The court's decision reads, Today we reject the idea that corporations have a freewheeling First Amendment right to censor what people say. Do you see the issue here? Are the First Amendment rights of big tech more important than the rights of the people? Are these big tech companies private companies? Or is the influence they have on everything in our society, along with government involvement in their platforms, a major concern when it comes to the constitutional rights of the people? Of course, industry groups NetChoice and CCIA are continuing to appeal and push back. You can imagine they won't go down without a fight. Now, consider the world you know and the world you don't. How much control does Google have on what you believe, what you do, and what you feel? I think it's safe to say that our world, as we know it, has become written for us. As you go about your day, think about how many times you say, Google it, or how many times you take the action of Googling it. What's the alternative? How will you go about finding the information they've blacklisted from you? Thanks for listening, and Godspeed.